What up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Coffee Talk, where we uh, grab our coffee, jump in the word, and um, learn about stuff. Okay, so um, today's going to be another kind of long one. So if you want to grab your Bibles, grab a cup of coffee, and we're going to get it in. So topic today is going to be on salvation. What does it mean to be a believer? What does it mean to be born again? And how are you saved? Okay, very important topic. I think it's a uh, kind of uh, the the foundation and the blueprint of what it means to be a believer and what we're all seeking out here. Um, what we're all looking for. We're all looking for love, you know, and we're all looking for um, the answers. Essentially, you know, there's a lot of the, a lot of division. Um, with believers, there's a lot of controversy, controversial um, ideologies and doctrines and stuff like that, um, which is different religions out there and all that type of stuff. Uh, so we're going to go to the Word of God, and we're uh, we're just we're going to knock this down, and we're going to we're going to see what the Word of God says. So, um, so first of all, uh, I want to pray real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day that you bless us with us, Lord. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to be able to um, go through your word and uh, really have the Holy Spirit just guide us with wisdom and understanding on, uh, on what your words mean and what the truth is, Lord. Uh, I pray that this video would be a blessing for everyone watching and uh, that the Holy Spirit would be with every single person um, tuned in today, Lord. In Jesus' mighty, perfect name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right, so we're going to go to the book of John, okay? So we're going to start out in John 3, John 3. So I'll wait for you to turn to that real quick. Jesus, fill my cup. That's what that says. This backwards, you can't read it, but that's the truth, man. <clears throat> All right, John 3, okay? So D Jesus teaches Nicodemus. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. Okay, so he's a top dog. He's, he's, um, he's, he's a Pharisee. Uh, so he's, he's a religious leader in that community. So he knows the word, the Old Testament, the Torah, front and back. These people, they, they were like scholars. You know what I mean? So he, he, he knew um, everything in the Old Testament. So he came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you were doing if God were not with him. Now, why would he come to Jesus at night? Okay, Probably because he didn't want other people knowing that he was actually even meeting with Jesus, but he knew that there was something up with Jesus, right? Because right, right here it says, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you were doing if God were not with him. Because remember, it, and if you don't know, you know, these stories in the Bible, they did not believe that Jesus was who he said he was. Um, they thought he was, um, they thought he was a false teacher. They, they thought he was blasphemous. Um, they, they, because from what they, what, what they knew in the Torah, in the Old Testament, is that their Messiah was going to come as a king, <clears throat> and Jesus came as a, um, as a as as a servant. So they didn't believe that he was who he was. Okay. So in reply, Jesus declared, "I tell you the truth: no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again." Right there, Jesus breaks that down, and and Nicodemus says, "How can a man be born when he is old?" Nicodemus asks. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. And Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God. No one can go to heaven unless he is born of water and the spirit. Now, what does that mean? What does it mean to be born of water? Okay. So <clears throat> what that resembles is a water baptism. So when you get baptized in water in the name of Jesus, when you get baptized in the name of Jesus, you're, you're going in into the water as 
as your old self, as a sinner that needs a savior, and you're, and you're coming out of that water, a new creation in Christ, born again, okay? Um, and, and what a wa water baptism resembles, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a baptism of, of faith and repentance. So you're putting your faith in Jesus, that Jesus is the son of God, and that he came to this earth to, to, to walk as, as a perfect human being, to fulfill the law, because remember the law, um, if you if you uh, if you did not if you did not follow the law to um, to, to perfection, you created you, you sinned, right? And sin, any sin, led to death. So in the Old Testament, um, what they would do is annually, once a year, the high priest of that of that community would sacrifice uh, like a bull or a sheep or or a clean sacrifice, a clean animal to cleanse the sins of, of all the people, okay? So when you believe that Jesus came to walk out as a perfect human being and died for the once and, uh, once and final sacrifice for all of the sins of, of, of mankind, that he died for your sins, because we're all a sinner, we all need a savior, there's not one per person on this earth that has ever walked out as a perfect human being other than Jesus Christ. When you believe that and you put your faith into that and you go into that water and you come out, you are a new creation. You are born again. Okay, So that's what it means. I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. So when you become born again, the Holy Spirit... The comforter, uh, the spirit of God now comes inside of you and lives inside of you. And it's a process, but that's what happens when you, when you get baptized or when you believe in Jesus Christ, that he is the son of man or the son of God, walked the earth, died for your sins and was risen from the death, was risen, conquered death, was, um, um, and, and the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of you, okay? So, born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. Okay? You should not be surprised at me saying, you must be born again. Okay? So, that's, that's the words from Jesus right there. Is in order for you to go to heaven, in order for you to obtain salvation, for, for when you die, your eternal soul, your spirit, is going to go to heaven for eternity, okay? Unless you do that, that, that then, then you're gonna go to the other place and, that's, and it's the truth, okay? So I'm gonna read that one more time. I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at me saying, you must be born again. It's bam, right there. Okay, now we're going to get into John 3, 16, one of the most uh, famous verses in the Bible. And you do not understand these things. I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know and we testify what we have seen. But still, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven. He's talking about himself, the son of man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the son of man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. It's all about Jesus, man. It's all about believing in Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, but because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, 
but men loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. It's talking about pretty much that we're, before we come to Christ, we're in sin. It's just in our nature. It's in our flesh. We were born into sin. Um, and that's that's a whole nother lesson. It goes back to the Garden of Edom, Garden of Edom um, and, and, and the fall of man. Every human being that is born into this world is born into the curse of the flesh, the curse of sin. Okay, Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. Pretty much everything that is done uh, that, that is of good is of through God. Okay, so boom, point blank. You must be born again. You must believe in Jesus Christ uh, uh, to enter into the kingdom of God. Okay. <clears throat> now we're going to go to John 14, 6. Okay, John 14, 6. Let me sip this coffee real quick. Let you all catch up. All right. Jesus answered. <clears throat> he's talking to, uh, um, uh, da, 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 da. I think he's talking to his disciples right here. Yeah, he's talking to his disciples. John 14, 6. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Um, or here, we'll, we'll just, we'll start at G, uh, um, John 14. We'll just read through it. Okay. Jesus comforts his disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. He's actually talking about the rapture right here. You know the way to the place where I'm going. He said, you know the way to the place where I'm going. You know the way to the place to go to heaven. I've already told you, it's through me. <clears throat> Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you, where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. So he's pretty much saying that Yo, if, you, if you know me, you know the Father. There's no way to get to the Father unless it is through me, Jesus Christ. Okay, so that that cancels out a lot of other re religions out there that that are saying that you can get to God without Jesus. And that's just that's just not the truth. This is the Holy Bible. This is the anointed word of God. The people that wrote these scriptures were anointed by the Holy Spirit. The spirit of God wrote the Bible and Jesus was the word came into flesh. So these words are God's words. So it says it right there. Okay. Now, um, da, 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 da. all right. <clears throat> all right. Now we're going to go to John 14, 15. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. Okay. This is big because remember it's born again through water and spirit. Okay? If you love me, you will obey what I command and I will ask the father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. And, and, and listen to what he says right here too. If you love me, you will obey what I command. Now, <clears throat> there's, there's a lot of like, kind of like new age doctrine that, that's out there. It's like this new age grace where it's like, you're saved by grace, absolutely 100%. Um, and grace alone, uh, as in your works cannot get you salvation. Um, but that doesn't give you a license to sin. Now we always want to seek to obey God because trust me, when you become born again, when you give your life to Jesus, there, the whole, there, there becomes this, there becomes this, this love that you've just never felt and never experienced. And you know that it's from the Father. It's the love of God. And, and, and you're, you're, you're born into that. It's like you're made into a new creation. And, and his love has just been implanted into your heart. 
And it's the truth. And so when he says, if you love me, you will obey what I command. Right there, you know? And, and so that's why, like me as a Christian, when I became born again, there's just a lot of things that I had to change in my life. Because I love God. Because I actually experienced the love of God. I had a divine experience with the spirit of God and I witnessed his love and it was supernatural. And you can't undo that. You can't unexperience that. You can't unbelieve that. And, and, and so that's that's why like where where you hear like this once saved, always saved. Like I I I agree with that in a sense of there's like when you're truly saved, like you can't undo that experience. You can't take away that love. It's supernatural. And, uh, and so that's why I, I feel that salvation is not something that you just, you know, you do out of fear. You know, you don't believe in Jesus at a, a, an altar call one day because you feel pressured into doing it. And you're like, yeah, I don't want to go to hell. I'll do this. I'll believe in Jesus. Um, that's not believing in your heart. That's you doing something out, out of an emotional experience. That's you doing something out of fear of, of a, poss a possible effect of not doing that. That's not you doing it because you truly want to give your life to God and you truly believe in your heart. Because when you believe in your heart, you get the Holy Spirit and it changes you. Now, it's a process. And everybody's walk is different. Everybody's uh, walk with God is at a different speed, at a different pace. People are in different situations in life and it's it's different for each person. So don't feel that you have to like uh, fit this perfect Christian mold in this perfect cookie cutter way of being a Christian. That's just, that's just not the reality. You know, like, like, like my testimony, you know, I came to Christ in a very, 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 very low place in my life, dealing with addictions and all types of stuff. And I was supernaturally changed um, by having an experience with the Holy Spirit in my living room on July 19th. But everybody's situation is different. And it's a personal relationship between you and God, you and the Holy Spirit. Um, and it's amazing. So let's keep reading. If you love me, you will obey what I command and I will ask the father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. He's talking about the unbelievers, the world, the people that do not believe in Jesus, that, that are mocking this, that think that Jesus was just some good guy. That's the world. That's the ideology, of, or, uh, uh, the ideology of the world. That's not the truth. Okay? The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you before long. The world will not see me anymore. He's talking about he's about to die and they don't know this yet. So he, they're. He's telling his uh, disciples something that they don't really understand yet. So I will not leave you as orphans. So he's saying, I'm going to die. I have to do this. I have to do this, but I'm doing this so you guys can receive the Holy Spirit. So I'm not going to leave you as orphans. You're not going to be out here by yourself. I'm going to be with you again, but it's going to be as the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to come live inside of you. Okay. Uh, before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live. You also will live on that day. You will realize that I am in my father and you are in me and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. So he's pretty much saying, if you love me, obey my commands. Now, does that mean that you're going to be perfect? Does that mean that you are going to have to follow the law? No. It's you, you, you strive, you strive to obey God. Okay. Are you going to fall short? Yeah, it's going to happen. You are a human being. You still have flesh. You are still in this carnal body, but the Holy Spirit will guide you and edify you 
and sanctify you. It's a process. But out of love, out of you loving God, you want to obey God. There's a certain way that you want to live your life. And you don't do it because you're a robot. You do it because you love him, because he loves you. It's just like when you're when you're in a relationship, right? When you fall in love with someone, um, do you want to just completely disobey that person? Do you want to not listen to anything that, that individual says? Do you want to go against their requests they have for you? No, you love them. So you want to please them because they want to please you because they love you. It's a relationship. It's a, it's, it's a legitimate relationship, you know? And so those are the, the, the regulations that we abide by in any true relationship with someone that we love, you know? So that's, that's what he means. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my father and I too will love him and show myself to him. Whew. Those are the words of Jesus. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go to Romans 10. Um, Romans 10. Uh, five. We'll just go Romans 10, five. So this is Paul. Okay, so this is Paul um, speaking to the Romans. Now, this is about salvation because at this time, there was so much different chatter and different things going on with all these new believers. No one really like understood, like, do we, do we still live by the law? Are, are, are we free from the law? Like, there was a big division with what was going on with all these new believers. So this is Paul um, speaking to, to, the, to the Christians in Rome. Okay, so we're going to go to Romans 10, 5. Okay? Moses describes in this way the righteousness that is by the law. The man who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. Okay, but this is right here. Romans 10, 8, right here. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are pro proclaiming. Okay, so it's all about faith. The word of faith is in your mouth and in your heart. Okay, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved right there. Now, what does that mean though? Kind of like what we were talking about a couple minutes ago. Does that mean that just you out of being pressured and out of fear one day, you're like, oh, uh, you know, yeah, I believe in Jesus. I don't want to go to hell. Is that you really truly believing in your heart what he did for you? I, I don't know. You know, I know for me, I grew up in, in, in a Christian household. I, I grew up with knowledge of this, but I don't truly think that I was actually saved through all that. I sure wasn't living for God. I sure wasn't convicted to live for God. Um, which means I, you know, I didn't really love God, you know? So you have to understand, even, even the demons know about Jesus. The devil knows the word. The devil knows the knowledge of this. Okay. And, and, and what I mean by that is there's, there's, you can, you can know about this and not truly believe it in your heart and, and cry out with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and that he died for my sins so that I could, I could go to heaven. And to, when you truly believe in your heart and walk that out and put your faith in that, that's what it truly means to give your life to God, okay? So the word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming that if you confess with your mouth, 
Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. And what does it mean to trust in him? That means to give him your life. You die to your old self. Your old self was a sinner that needed a savior. You couldn't walk out the law. You couldn't get to heaven without him. You couldn't do this without him. So when you give him your life, you're trusting your life with him. That's what it means to lay down your life, to die to yourself, to die to your own understanding, to die to your own will and allow God to have your life for Jesus. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. There it is. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, now we're going to go to 2 Corinthians 2. 2 Corinthians 2. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what this is about. It is not your works that make you saved. It is not your attendance at church that makes you saved. It is not your um, <clears throat> how many good things that make you saved. You can't be a good person and not believe in Jesus and make it to heaven. And that's sad because there's a lot of good people out in this world. But the reality is, is that we have to put our faith in Jesus Christ and become born again and disciples of Jesus to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now that may look a million different ways. You don't have, there's no like certain way that you have to look or act or whatever it may be. Like me, like I'm probably not your normal cookie cutter, um, you know, Christian essentially. Um, but I love Jesus and I'm born again. And so I have salvation. Now, do I fall short now and then? Do I still struggle with things now and then? Absolutely. But by grace through faith, I am saved. So let's dive into that. Okay. Uh, Ephesians 2, made alive in Christ. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. The spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. He's talking about the devil, the spirit of the Antichrist. Okay, so he's saying you were, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. The spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among, among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Whew. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. Okay, right there. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. Human beings by nature are destined for wrath because we are born into a sinful nature. Our flesh is of sin, it's wicked, it's corrupt. It's evil. That, and that, that, is, that is normal for someone that doesn't know Jesus. It's normal. It's in our nature to be sinful. Okay? Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. Okay, right there, man, that's amazing. Because of his great love for us, God who is in rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. Guys, you don't have, and man, there's so, there's so many people that feel like that they're, they're too far gone to come to God. 
that they're too wicked to come to God. That they don't fit the part that God doesn't love them. We're all, we're all destined to wrath. Every single human being on this earth is destined to wrath before we come into faith. That means that there is nothing that you can do. There is nothing that you can do or have done in the past that God will not with open arms lovingly bring you in as a son and forgive you and love you. I was wicked, man. I was, I was bad. I was bad and he forgave me. There is nothing that you can do or have done. Trust me, he knows your heart. He knows everything about you. There's nothing that you've ever done that he doesn't know about. And so by the grace of God, when you put your faith into Jesus and cry out to him and, and confess that Jesus is Lord, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need a savior. I believe that you came and died for my sins and you were up on that cross willingly for the sins of all mankind and you died for me and you were risen from the dead by the Holy Spirit and by God. Will you believe that with your heart? And you give your life to him, man. You are saved by his grace. It's amazing. It saved me. It saved my life. Straight up. Bro, I was, whew, doesn't matter about me. But, but what I'm saying is there's nothing that you have done or can do that will take you away from the grace and mercy and the love of God. It says it right here. Let's keep reading because it's good. <clears throat> but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And that is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. It is a gift. There's nothing that you can do to earn it. It doesn't matter about your, your, your attendance at church. It doesn't matter about the deeds that you do. It doesn't matter about all the things that you feel that you have to do to get to God. And that's why there's a lot of religions out there that that make it very hard for people to receive the love of God because they feel that they have to abide by all these traditions and abide by all these principles and, 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 and things, all these works. It says it right here. It's not about your works. Now, now are they, because when we become saved and we get the Holy Spirit and the love of God in us, then we want to go do those good things. But that's not why you're saved. You're not saved because you do all these things. You're saved by the grace and mercy of God. It's a gift. It's a gift because you believe, because you will put your heart, you put your faith in Jesus. That is a gift. And you can't take that back. Does that make sense? I hope so. Because it's important. Because it's something that I didn't really understand for a long time too. You know? Um, all right. For it is by grace you've been saved through faith. And this is from yourselves. And this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, nor by works, so that no one can boast, so that no one can be in self-righteousness, so that no one can be that, oh, I'm better than all of you because I do all these things. Okay? And... <clears throat> Um, so not by works, so that no one can boast, for we are, are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So it's pretty much saying, for we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, so that when we become a new creation in Christ, that we're, we are to go do good works. 
because the Holy Spirit guides us to do these things. But that doesn't mean that your salvation is about the works. Now, also, this is a big deal, too, <clears throat> because when you become saved again, you know, there's we're going to go through seasons. There's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be trials and tribulations through these walks and just rest, rest in, 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 in the truth of what this is saying. You're not going to lose your salvation if you slip up. You're not going to lose your salvation if you at some point aren't as close as, as you once were with God. You're not going to lose your salvation if you stop going to church or stop going to youth group or stop going to Bible study because you're going through a season in life. Remember, God uses all things for his good. Okay, so rest in, in, in the truth of this. Rest in the truth of your salvation. You are saved by grace through faith alone, not by your works. So know that, man. And um, this is important stuff, man, because <clears throat> it's something that, that, that I struggle with right off the bat, too. Uh, when I first got saved, I, I got into a place of almost like legalism. Almost like a, a self righteousness kind of came over me because my my uh, my faith came so drastic. I had a divine experience with the Holy Spirit and I was changed instantly. And it was it was a trip. It was amazing. <clears throat> uh, if you want to know more about it, uh, go into my YouTube channel right here and uh, go to the video where it says "I met Jesus in my living room." Um, phenomenal, amazing stuff. But not everybody has that experience. Not everybody has that, that not everybody is in a place that, that I was in because I was in a wicked, 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 wicked place before I came to Christ. And so I, I came into understanding of, oh my gosh, I got to change everything about my life. And so I made the decision that I wanted to live for God at the most, at, 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 at the highest possible level that I could. I sought righteousness and holiness immediately. But look, not everybody is going to be in that position. Everybody's walk is going to be different. So we can't judge other people for maybe sin that they're dealing with. Because remember, sin is sin. If you go back into the law, if you committed one sin, it was death. Sin equal death. So we're not to judge our brothers and sisters in Christ that may be in in a season that may, they may be struggling with something. They may be dealing with something. We don't know what's going on in someone's personal life. So if someone is dealing with, you know, something that we feel is maybe not very Christian, right? We can't get on our high horse and self-righteousness and judge them because what they may be dealing with, we might not understand. They might be in a different area of their walk. Okay, because remember, they're saved by grace through faith alone. So it's not upon their salvation that, 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 that they're dealing with. Okay, so we got to pray for our brothers and sisters. We got to encourage our brothers and sisters. If you see someone out there that, that you know that maybe is struggling with some type of sin that you dealt with in the past, man, pray for him. Pray for him. Don't judge them. Don't condemn them. Don't, don't get on our high horse and be like, oh, man, you... Should be doing that. Da, 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 da. I mean, is that is that what Jesus did? You know, Jesus came to love people. Jesus got to people's hearts by loving them, not by condemning them and judging them. Remember that. Okay. Um, and the reason why I bring that up is because that's something that 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 I struggled with at, at, at first. You know, because I had this this whole brand new world just. I was entered into and I was like, oh my gosh, the world is so wicked. I almost got to a point of like, I didn't know how to deal with it, you know, because I was blind and now I see, you know, that's what happened to me. And, and, and that's what will, can, can happen, you know, with a lot of people when you come into Christ, you know, you were blind and now you see. And so now you see the world for what it is and you see that the world is full of sin and the world is lost, but the world needs love. The world needs for you to love them, not judge them. So, I hope that's encouraging. Um, I want to go through one more thing. 
before we're before we're done. <clears throat> so, First Corinthians fifteen. This is big. First Corinthians fifteen. This is Paul speaking to the Corinthians. <clears throat> All right, now brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. Okay, let's break that down. Now brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, the gospel, the good news, the life of Jesus, the 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 the, the death of, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for our sins, the gospel, which you have received and in which you have taken your stand. <clears throat> by this gospel, you are saved. You are saved by the belief in Jesus Christ, the death, uh, death, burial, and resurrection. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. And after that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers of this at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep, some have died. Um, that's, that's what they, when you, when you hear, um, Paul talking about um, brothers that have fallen asleep. It's people that were in Christ that have died. That so they're they're they were awake, they're alive, and now they're asleep. But they're they're dead. They're with Christ. <clears throat> and then uh, after that, he appeared to more than five hundred of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James. Then to all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me also to one abnormally born because he wasn't a Jew, um, or no, sorry, he, he was he was a Jew, but he wasn't in, um, Paul wasn't one of the original apostles. That's what he means by that. Um, For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I, per I persecuted the church of God. So if you don't know about Paul, Paul at one point was Saul. Saul was a Pharisee. He was a religious leader in, uh, uh, for the Jews. And he persecuted Christians. He killed Christians. And then Jesus came to him, knocked him off his freaking horse, uh, made him blind and had an experience with the Holy Spirit and changed him into Paul. Whole different story. So, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I, this is what we preach and this is what you believed, <clears throat> the resurrection of the dead. But if it is, but if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of dead? <clears throat> if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. <laughs> because at this time, there's people saying that there was no, no, there was no resurrection. So he's pretty much saying, if that's the truth, then what we believe is false. And, and, and that I never had an experience with Jesus and everything's a lie. And, and this is kind of like where, 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 where I stand with it too. When people try to tell me that, you know, this isn't the truth and all that type of stuff. I go back to my actual encounter with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. I met Jesus and I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit in my living room. It was a divine experience between me and the Spirit of God. And so that's what Paul is talking about too. That if, if, if there's no resurrection, then everything that I believe is false. Is, is false. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. And so is your faith. More than that. We are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead, but he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. So if there's no way that people can be raised, and, uh, raised from the dead, if that's false teaching, then everything that we're talking about is a lie. Huh. Right? 
For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead, but he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. They're all in hell. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are, we are to be pitied more than all men. So he's pretty much saying that if what all these people are saying against us is true, then Jesus wasn't the son of God. Everyone uh, that ha has the Holy Spirit is pretty much wicked and false. And that everyone that died is actually in hell. Though that we, us that know the truth, we know that that is absolutely incorrect. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, talking about Adam, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man, Jesus. That's why Jesus had to be a man. That's why God had to come down as a man because sin and death entered into the world through a human being, through Adam, and was then passed along the seed of Adam through all of humanity. Sin came through man, lived through all men, because remember, all men were destined through wrath because of who we are as humans. So that means that, that, uh, that Jesus, that God had to come down as a man. It's deep. It's so freaking deep, man. It's amazing when you actually when you actually break it down. God, the creator of the universe, had to come down uh, and the Holy Spirit put him, put God into a virgin. Put him and grew God. God was in the womb of a woman for 9 months and was birthed a human being. And it had to happen that way because sin came in from a man. And so in order for, for the, the sin, of, or in order for the sacrifice to happen for all of men, it had to have be done from a man. So that, <laughs> it's deep, man. It's so deep when you actually... When you actually like realize it and break it down and why Jesus is who he is and why he walked as a human being. He was he was he was he was, he was God, but he was human at the same time. Fully God, fully human. That means that when he walked on this earth, he set aside his divineness. He set aside his power to be God. For 30 years, as a man, walked it out perfect. And then when the Holy Spirit came down, when he was when he was baptized in the River Jordan, he received the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that you have when you believe. That's the crazy thing. The same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead and was in Jesus uh, that came down from heaven when the heavens were ripped apart when Jesus Christ was baptized in the river Jordan when he was 30 years old when he started his ministry because you have to realize his ministry didn't start until he received his uh, uh, received the Holy Spirit his signs healings miracles prophecy and teaching did not start until um, he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. So that means when you believe, when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, that he was the son of God as a man, walked the earth, sinless, died as a sacrifice for the sin of all humanity. When you believe that, you receive the same Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit lives inside of you and me. That's deep, man, and it's amazing. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive, but each in his own turn. Christ, the first fruits. Then when he comes, those who belong to him, then the end will come. When he hands over the kingdom of God, the father, after he has destroyed all dominion and power, 
uh, or all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his foot. He came to destroy sin once and for all, forever. His last words that Jesus said on the cross, right before he took his last breath as a human being, is he says, it is finished. It is finished. All that believe in me will be set free from the bondage of sin and wrath and death and destruction. It's amazing. You are, it's, it's freedom. You have freedom in Christ. Are we gonna struggle? Are we gonna fall short from time? Yes, but you are broken free of the bondage and the chains of, 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 of the sinful nature that all mankind was destined to before Jesus came and, and, and did away with it. It's deep, man. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he has put everything under his feet. Now, when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that this does not include God himself, who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the son himself will be made subject to him, who put everything under him so that God may, may be all in all. Now, if there is no resurrection, what will those do who are baptized for the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, why are people baptized for them? And as for us, why do we endanger ourselves every hour? I die every day. I mean that, brothers, just as surely as I glory, uh, as I glory over you in Christ Jesus our Lord. If I fought wild beasts in Ephesus for merely human reasons, what have I gained if the dead are not raised? It's amazing. So Paul's pretty much saying like, what am I doing out here? What's the point of any of this if this isn't true? Well, I'll tell you, it is the truth. Absolutely. And it's amazing. And brothers and sisters, rest, rest in this. Rest in the truth that your salvation lies in faith, in grace through faith. Not by your works, man. Not by living a perfect life. Not by having to fit a, a certain Christian image. And, you know what I mean? And it's, and it's so sad when I go on the internet and I just see so many Christians just bashing down other Christians and condemning other Christians. Yo, we were all flawed. But through grace, by faith, we are saved by the blood of Jesus and what he did on that cross. Hallelujah. It's amazing. <sighs> so rest in that. Rest in that truth. And look, Anybody that's watching, if you haven't given your life to Jesus yet, if, you have, if you're not saved yet, man, say, say this prayer with me right now. Dear Father, I come before you. I'm a sinner. I have fallen short. I'm, and I need a Savior. I don't want to do this alone anymore. I believe that Jesus was God and came onto this earth and died on that cross and was raised from the dead so that I no longer had to be in bondage by sin. Come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins and wash me in your blood. In Jesus' name, amen. And put your faith in him. Just give him your life. Trust me. It's the most amazing or most important thing that you'll ever do. I promise you that. Because the reality is we're all going to die. At some point, I've lost a lot of people. I'm sure you've lost a lot of people. And I'm sure not many of those deaths were deaths that we 
we knew were gonna happen. They usually just happen, which means that individual that died had no, no warning. It just happened. And the reality is, is this, this body that we have is temporary. Our soul is permanent. And from what we just read through the scriptures, remember, this is the truth. This is the anointed word of God. The Holy Spirit wrote this book. The Holy Spirit wrote this book. It says that there is not one stroke of the pen in this book that is not anointed by God. So what we just learned in these scriptures, that if we don't put our faith in Jesus, then we're, you know, we're, we're destined for wrath. And that's not, don't be scared of that. Just put your faith in Christ. Give him your life. He saved me, man. He saved me from a life of addictions, lust, self-hatred, violence, all type, I mean, all types of stuff. I'm not gonna get into my testimony right now, but I'll do it someday. But he saved me from all that. And he can do it for you too. And he will. You just got to put your faith in him. God bless you guys. Have a good day. And check out some of the other videos on my channels for other teachings. Love you.